what's the connection between the first derivative and increasing and decreasing for the graph of a function f. Before we get to that, some definitions. So we'll say f is increasing on a region if, whenever a is less than b, f of a is less than or equal to f of b. We'll say strictly increasing if f of a is strictly less than f of b. We'll have analogous definitions for decreasing and strictly decreasing. There, we'll switch the order of the inequality for f. Now, if we look at pictures, increasing and decreasing look like this. So for increasing, as I move from left to right, our graph is going to be traveling up. Since we have an equality between f of a and f of b, potentially, it could move up, hang out on a horizontal line for a while, and keep moving up. Actually, the whole thing could just live on a horizontal line. That's just part of the definition of increasing. If I'm strictly increasing, then that thing has to keep moving up. Okay, there's no rest if you're strictly increasing. Same idea for decreasing and strictly decreasing. Okay, strictly decreasing means I have to keep moving down. As we go from left to right, decreasing would say we could have straight across if we wanted, or we move down, take a break and go straight across, and then keep going down again. So that's what we're up against pictorially. Let's consider some examples. So first example, f of x equal to square root of x. Our region here is going to be x bigger than or equal to 0. Draw the graph of square root of x, and it's going to look like this. So if you notice, the graph here is strictly increasing. How do we use this numerically? For instance, we have 2 less than 4. Since I'm strictly increasing, I have f of 2 less than f of 4, or square root of 2 is less than square root of 4. If we crunch out square root of 2, that's roughly 1.4. So we're just saying 1.4 is less than 2. For an example, strictly decreasing, let's use f of x equal to 1 over x on x bigger than 0. So our graph looks like this. Okay, that's strictly decreasing. Again, if I have 2 less than 4, we apply f. Since we have decreasing, we switch the order. So here I'm going to have f of 2 is bigger than f of 4, or 1 half is greater than 1 fourth. Going to decimal, that's just saying 0.5 bigger than 0.25. What's the connection between the first derivative and increasing and decreasing? The first derivative is positive on an interval, then my function is going to be increasing on that interval. If the first derivative is negative on that interval, then the function will be decreasing on that interval. Does this make sense? Sure it does. If we think about what the first derivative gives us, so suppose the first derivative is positive at a point. At that point, that means the tangent line is going to have a positive slope. Positive slope means the tangent line is like this. Now, very close to our point, the tangent line is a good approximation of the graph. So if my tangent line is increasing, then the graph should be increasing very close to our point also. Similar reasoning is going to hold when the derivative is negative. Okay, why is this item true? Well, we want to look at what happens when, say, the derivative is negative. So we're going to have our interval. We're going to have a less than b. We'll suppose the function is actually negative at a and b for its derivative. Then we're going to have a less than b means b minus a is a positive number. I want to appeal to the mean value theorem. So what's that going to say? I cook up my gadget for the slope of the secant line. So that's going to be f of b minus f of a over b minus a. There's going to be some point x0 between a and b where the derivative at x0 is equal to the slope of our secant line. Now, we know in the region, f prime is going to be negative. So that means the slope of my secant line is going to be negative. I can clear the denominator out. Since b minus a is positive, it won't affect my inequality. 
So I'm looking at f of b minus f of a is less than zero. I move the f of a to the other side, and that gives me f of b is less than f of a. Since a is less than b, this is exactly my definition for decreasing. Now, same argument's gonna hold when you do increasing. It's just gonna switch the order of my inequality. Let's look at some examples. First example is x squared minus 4x. This is a parabola, it's facing up, and its vertex is gonna be at x equal to two. Now, we're interested in increasing and decreasing, so I'm gonna take the derivative, it's gonna give me 2x minus four, and I wanna know where that derivative is, positive or negative. So I'll just draw in a real line. Where is our derivative equal to zero? Okay, where zero is the only way I can change from positive to negative, because this is a polynomial. So it's gonna be zero at x equal to two, so we'll mark that off. And then to tell whether I'm positive or negative on the regions that we just split into, it's enough to check one point. If I know one point, I'm gonna get the whole rest of my region because the only way I could go from positive to negative is by going through zero first. And we know exactly where that happens. Now, I'll try points one and three for each region. So if I put a one into my derivative, I'm gonna get a minus two. So I'm negative on this region. If I put three in, we're gonna get a two. So I'm gonna be positive on this region. If I go to the graph, what are we gonna do? I'll put a box in, I'll cut it where we have the derivative equal to zero. And so what do you notice? We're gonna be decreasing, okay, it's going down, when I'm on this side of two, and then we're increasing on the other side. We're gonna be moving up. So my mechanical calculation is gonna match up with our graph. Next example, consider f of x equal to x to the two thirds. I take its derivative, bring the two thirds down, take one off the exponent, gives me two thirds x to the minus one third. I can rewrite that as two thirds, one over x to the one third. Now, critical points, well, this will never be equal to zero. We can only get a zero if the numerator equals zero. So we're gonna be worried about getting undefined. That'll occur when we're dividing by zero or when the denominator is zero. Denominator will be zero when x equals zero, so we have a critical point there. So we'll mark that off on our line. To tell if I'm increasing or decreasing, I just need to check one point on each side. So we'll check one and minus one. So what happens? If I put one in, what comes out? Well, cube root of one is equal to one. So we're gonna get a two thirds that's positive. So I'm gonna be increasing on that side is zero. On the other side, I put a minus one in there. What happens? Cube root of minus one is minus one. Two ways you can think of that. If I take the cube root of a negative number, it just gives me back minus the cube root of the number without the minus sign. Or I can think of it as minus one cubed equals minus one, and then I take the cube root of both sides, get my answer that way. Either way, we're gonna get a minus sign out. So I'm gonna have a negative number here, and so I'm gonna have decreasing when I'm less than zero. When we look at the graph, the decreasing and the increasing pan out. 